Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about CSS isolation for Blazor WebAssembly applications. So usually if you want to make some CSS changes then you can make a CSS changes in app.css file which comes out of the box for Blazor application or you can create custom CSS file for your application and add some classes so that you could use those classes for your Razor component. Once you're done with making changes in your CSS file or adding CSS files, you'll have to add those references in index.html file if you're using Blazor WebAssembly application. If you're using Blazor Server application, then you'll have to add this reference in host.cshtml file. Then you can use these classes for your Razor component and see some UI changes. But if you want to use CSS isolation, then you can create CSS file for each of your Razor components. Let's say if I want to make changes in my contacts.razor component, then I can create contacts.razor.css file in the same folder wherever my contacts.razor component is. Then I can add CSS classes in this file. And whenever I compile my application, then all the CSS files for each of my Razor component will get bundled into this reference. I'm using blazingchat.client.styles.css because blazingchat.client is the project assembly name for my project. You'll have to change this depending on whatever project name that you're using for your application in index.html file. If you're using Blazor server application, then you'll have to add this reference in host.cshtml file for your application. Let's go ahead and make some code changes and see how these resources are getting loaded in our browser. For demo, I'm going to use contacts page in my Blazing chat application that we have been working on. Here we have a list of contacts and I want to show the contact names bolder. For that, first I'm going to make changes in my app.css file and see how the resources are getting loaded in the browser. And then I'm going to apply the same changes by using CSS isolation technique, and then we'll observe how the resources are getting loaded in the browser. So first we'll have to find app.css file. For that, I'm going to go to my client project and then find my root folder in which I have CSS folder here. That's where app.css is located. I'm going to open that file. And here I'm going to create a CSS class, which I'm going to name it as bold text. And here I'm going to set the font weight to bolder. Now that I'm done with making changes in my app.css file, I need to make sure this file is referenced in my index.html file. So I'm going to open this file. And here I can see this file is referenced in my application. If you're creating a custom CSS file, please add that reference in index.html file. Otherwise you won't see the changes on your Razor component. Now I can go to my Razor component. I can go to my contacts.razor file. And here I'm using anchor tag to show my first name and last name for the contacts. And I have so many classes assigned to this anchor tag. Here, I'm going to add my class, which is going to be bold text. Now that I've made changes in my Razor component, I'll have to recombine my application. So I'm going to stop the application and we got it. If I refresh my page now, then I can see my contact names getting changed to bolder text. I'm going to open my console here and go to sources. Here I can go to my app.css. Let me first find that file. I can go to CSS folder and open app.css file. Here I can see bold text class getting added in my app.css file. And if I inspect these element, then I can see bold text is assigned to my anchor tag here. Now, let's say if I want to set the color of my text to purple, then I can go to my app.css and change the color to purple. And now I'm not gonna stop the application. I'm not going to recompile my application. I'm just making changes in my app.css file. And now if I refresh the page, 
then the color gets applied to my contacts in my contacts page and you can also see the changes in bold text color is added as one of the styles for the classes now one thing that i want you to notice that is we did not have to recompile our application let's go ahead and do the same thing with css isolation and see how it behaves for that i'm going to create a file in my pages folder wherever my contacts.razor file is here i'm going to create a new file that i'm going to name it as contacts.razor.css file and then i'm going to cut this class from app.css file and paste it in my contacts.razor.css file and now we'll have to recompile our application because if you're making changes in contacts.razor.css file then these css changes need to get bundled in one css file and that css file is in your index.html file so in our last episode we added this reference in our index.html file when we migrated from .NET Core 3.1 to .NET 5 and I added the CSS reference as blazing chat.client.styles.css and this is the project assembly name for my project for my client project you will have to change this depending on whatever project name is for your application now we'll have to recompile our application so i'm going to stop my application and rerun it that will recompile my application take all the css changes from this razor.css file and bundle it into one css file which is referenced in my index.html file so if i go back and refresh my application then i can see the same changes that we did through app.css now let's check the resources which are getting loaded in an application now if i open app.css i do not see my class here but if i go to this blazing chat.client.styles.css file then i can see this bold text getting added as one of the classes in the css file if i try to inspect these elements now then i can see bold text and this random text getting assigned in my anchor tag one disadvantage that i saw was we changed css file in app.css and without recompiling our application we saw the effect on our application but let's say if i remove this color now from contacts.razor.css file and save this file and then refresh my application then i do not see those effects in my page if i go to my sources and open blazing chat.client.styles.css file i still have this color loaded in my application so this is one of the disadvantages that blazing WebAssembly applications have but i think this experience will get better when hot reload is released for blazer WebAssembly application with dotnet 6 applications then application will get changed whenever you're making changes in your files and then you'll see the effects directly on your pages so that's how css isolation works in the next section i'm going to talk about you can change the style of child components by using css isolation you can use css isolation on the child components if you like Let's say if I want to change some of the style for my nav menu component, which is a child component to my main layout component, then without changing anything in my nav menu component, I can apply some of the styles on this component. First, I do need to make sure that my main layout has nav menu as one of its child component. Then if I want to change some of the styles in my nav menu, I can go to my main layout.razor.css file and here i can use deep and then apply css on html elements which are there in the nav menu component i'm going to open my nav menu component to check what html elements that i want to apply css on here i have list items which is these items so i want to set background color to aqua 
for these list items. For that, I'm going to go back to my main layout.razor.css file and say that list items should have background color as aqua. Now, let's assume that I do not have access to nav menu.razor component. This is a third party component, and I'm still applying some of the styles on this nav menu component. Let's run this and see if this works or not. Now, if I refresh the page, then you can see that aqua color is getting set as background color to my nav menu list items. We did not change anything in our nav menu.razor component, but still we were able to apply styles for this component. So this is how you can apply styles by using CSS isolation for your child components. Last thing that I wanted to talk about is Razor class libraries. Let's say if you're working on Razor class libraries and if you want to apply CSS isolation for some of the Razor components in this class library, and if you want to refer to those CSS classes, then you'll have to add this line in your project where you're referring to this Razor class library, where class lib is the assembly name for the Razor class library that you're using. That's all about CSS isolation. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.